I'm, uh, I'm not one for favourites, but, but if I was to pick a favourite TV show, I think I'd probably choose The West Wing. I don't know if anyone's sort of familiar with it. It was all the rage back in the late 80s through to the mid-2000s. And it's a show that centres around a fictional president of the United States and his senior staff who work in the West Wing of the White House. And the pilot episode of this series, you know, pilots are the great way the directors and the showrunners use this to try and get the attention of TV executives and whatnot. And this particular pilot, I think, is a piece of television. It's an absolute masterpiece. It's fantastic. That it sets the scene, as all pilots do at the beginning of the story. But the way the episode is written is that one by one, different staff members are introduced, plots and subplots are woven through, yet one character is missing and one question hangs over the episode who is this president you know who is this one who is to come and what is he like and it comes to a head they're having this discussion just off to an office to the side of the oval office the president's office and for some reason they're talking about which is the first commandment and this guy says well the first commandment is to honor your mother and father to which one of the staff members replies, says, no, that's the fourth command, we have to get this right. And the other guy retorts very kind of passionately, well, then what's the first commandment? And then you hear this voice as the president walks in, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Uh, so we're not here to say that the president of the United States is God. I'm very, very far from that. But what at points to is that the entire episode, this entire pilot episode is all leading up to this question and what hangs over the episode is the question, who is the one? You know, who is he? Who is the present? Who is the one who is to come? And as you move pretty quickly towards Christmas, I found myself asking this person, this question personally. Who is the one who is to come? To put it another way, who is Jesus? Right, who is Jesus for me personally as I come towards Christmas? And if I was to ask myself that question really honestly and probably more humbly than I'd like to admit, what would the answer be that comes back? And I think when I look at that, what rises within me is something of a tension. It's almost as if there's different parts of me that would answer that question in different ways. Some parts would be really happy, They'd be really happy to declare, well, Jesus, well, yes, Jesus is Lord. He's my saviour. I know him personally. I've given my life to him. I want to follow him in the broken way that I do that. I'm really happy to make him the centre of my life. But I know all too well that there's parts of me that if I ask that question, they maybe wouldn't quite answer the same way. They wouldn't be as happy and as keen to make such a declaration. And as we come towards Christmas, just as the question of who this president is hangs over the, uh, the, the first episode of The West Wing, so too this question of who Jesus is, Jesus is hangs over our lives and our own stories. That in this time of preparation for Advent, or preparation over Advent for Christmas, we've heard in the first week of Advent the need to be ready, the need to be on guard and ready to welcome the Lord. And last week, the second week, we heard the call to prepare a way for the Lord, to make straight the paths, to lay low the mountains and to fill in the valleys, to make a path for the coming of the Lord. And so the question now before us is, who is this Lord that we're welcoming? Who is the one who is to come? Who is Jesus to me here in Penshurst in December 2023? And if we ask this question honestly, I wonder whether we can all notice and recognize a similar tension within us that I see in little old me, that there's this struggle between the parts of our lives where maybe we've invited Jesus into and we think where things are in good order and it's all going well, and maybe those bits that we think, oh, maybe I'd prefer Jesus not to know too much about those, or I don't want to invite Jesus into those things just yet. We We can sit in the middle of the tension between these two realities. And so let's turn to the gospel then in light of this tension. And at first glance, the gospel last week and this week seem very familiar. John the Baptist is there, there's people from Jerusalem, there's talks of straight paths and there's sandals and there's water and there's all all a great manner of things that are similar. 
But what I think is remarkable about these passages isn't so much about what's similar in them, but it's about what are the things that are different. And the main difference that I want to highlight this morning is around the question is who does the story centre around? It's pretty clear to me that last week's gospel was all about John the Baptist. This week it seems like John can't get out of the way quick enough. That in this, this week's gospel, the most important character is, just like that episode of the West Wing, the most important character is the one who is missing from the story. It's the one who is to come. This question of who this person is, the one that this question that the, uh, the Pharisees sent people to say, who are you? This question of who are you hangs over the entirety of John's gospel. That's saying, well, who is Jesus? And the thing is, we already know the answer. We've, we've, we know the spoilers, right? 2,000 years ago, we know how the story ends. But even in John telling this story, he's, he mentions Jesus just two verses earlier. He's basically saying, well, this whole thing's about Jesus Christ. Now let's get into the story. And then Jesus is miraculously or, um, or amazingly absent. What John is doing is that he's introducing to us this central tension. It's not about whether we know that Jesus is the main character. I think that's pretty clear to us. But it's what does it mean for Jesus to be the main character? What John's doing is he's introducing us to this central tension of the gospel story, this tension that maybe we can identify in running through the middle of our own hearts. And that is that in the response to the question, who is the one who is to come, there are those who see and walk in the light of faith that Jesus is the Messiah, that they believe in him, that they want to give their lives to him. And there are those who don't see and who walk in the darkness of unbelief. That John's repeated answer of I am not is laying the path for Jesus to say that I am he. I am the one who is to come. That we're given this gospel on the cusp of the run into Christmas at the point of Advent where we shift our focus to the story of Jesus' birth. That we can ask ourselves, well, who is this Jesus who is coming into the world? And this isn't just a question that hangs over the gospel 2,000 years ago. It hangs over all of our lives today. And it's a question that Jesus wants us to ask. Jesus wants us to ask the question and to wait for an answer. To wait for the answer that Jesus longs to speak into our heart, which is that, yes, he is the one who is to come. He is the one that each and every heart has been crying out for. He is the answer to every longing in every human heart. He's the light that comes into even the deepest and darkest pit of darkness in our lives. That even this darkness cannot overcome. That he wants to reveal himself to us in this way, in a new way, this Christmas. And so the first and second readings then point us to the fundamental truth that when we know Jesus in this way, when we allow ourselves to be encountered by him and when we take up the invitation to come and see with the eyes of faith, that we can't help but rejoice because of what we've discovered, that we've discovered an encounter with a Jesus who changes us, who changes our lives, that we can't help but experience the joy of knowing Jesus. And that's what we celebrate today, and it's why we celebrate today as Gaudate Sunday, is the Sunday of rejoicing, the Sunday of joy, because of the joy that comes from knowing him. And this is the joy that Jesus wants to invite each of us into in a new personal, deep, and unique way this Christmas. And all this requires of us is something really, really simple. A simple invitation to ask the question of Jesus today, Jesus, who are you? Who are you for me? Who do you want to be in my life? And to let him respond to that question, because he will respond. Because Jesus wants to encounter us this Christmas and to enter into deeper relationship with us. So this is the invitation today as we journey into the next week in the lead up to Christmas on Monday week, to experience the joy of knowing Jesus, to ask the question, Jesus, who are you? To ask him, Lord, reveal yourself to me. And so as we enter into the Eucharist this morning, let's open ourselves to this question and to continue to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus this Christmas, to encounter in a deep way the joy that comes from knowing him. Amen.